really don't know how to feel about Alex uh, coming up here like that. And you know, obviously it's a lot of raw emotion. I'm not sure if, we get, if we're getting, you know, seeing his videos and stuff. I'm not sure if we can play it or, I mean, he speaks the truth in some ways, but at the same time, he just brings the, the feelings right out and uh, kind of resurfaces everything that we've been through. So I don't know how to, I really don't know how I feel about Alex at this moment. I, I think I agree with the yeah. young lady. Um, anyhow, let me, let me get, uh, get together here. So I wanted to uh, I wanted to commend you for adding uh, item six C to the uh, to the agenda, providing resolution, kind of bring attention to the uh, to the gun issue, um, kind of putting pressure on Governor Abbott to address the issue with uh, with the guns, and I hope and I'm sure everyone's going to vote on it passes, move along. Don't know how far it's going to get, but it's one step at a time. Put pressure on Governor Abbott to step it up a little bit. And I think I think for the most part, everybody everybody I talk to says it's, it's got to change, at least raise it up. You got to start somewhere. Um, you provided an explanation on, on uh, Mr. Farigas. I wanted to kind of get clarification where he stands on the on the termination list or any type of, you know, action is going to take place, but I appreciate coming out and basically stating that up front. Um, one other point that my, one of my coworkers brought up today, he sent this kid to, to a private school and he asked me, he's concerned about the security at those schools. He understands that it's private, but he wants to see, he wanted me to ask you guys if, there's, if y'all can provide some kind of, uh, like what you're doing to work with, for example, Sacred Heart, St. Phillips, and the Uvalde Classical, the Uvalde Classical Academy. There's any, uh, if y'all are working with them, maybe looking at floor plans and running dry runs and stuff like that. If you kind of talk about that a little bit, please. I know I talked to the chief yesterday. We're going to be increasing our patrols uh, in those in all the schools, not not just the private schools. All the schools are going to have extra patrols during, you know, I guess when they first come in and and when they when they're leaving school. So yes, we are, we're gonna be working with them. I talked to the chief yesterday and there will be extra patrols during the school times, so. And I know I heard today that DPS, they've asked DPS to be at all the schools on opening day. Yes. And, and they'll probably be there. Including private ones? Yes. I don't know about private, but public schools for we sure. We would hope. Yes, we'll get, we'll make sure. Okay, I appreciate that, thank you all. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, thank Mr. you. Let's see if uh, Miss Elvina Castro, did I say it right? Miss Castro. Thank you very much. I won't be so angry and I won't use, I'll try not to cuss. Anyway, um, when I use the word you, I'm not just talking about you guys, I'm talking also about the school board. When I use the word you, please. Okay. Um, I'll, this is to the city manager for a second. The large cross that's still at 8th Bell Bond, when will it be moved to the town square? Is it planning to get moved or is it going to stay at 8th Bell Bond? I have no idea what the answer to that question well, is right now. Well, who's in charge of that? 8th Bell Bond? I that believe the people that brought the cross ended up putting it where. I'm sorry? I said I believe the people that brought the cross ended up putting, what, putting it where you they could arrange to do that. Do you want the cross over here at the town plaza as a memorial, as a memory? There's your answer right there. I'm going to get angry. I can just feel it coming. Oh, darn. Um, I have been to several meetings, and I'm seeing the families and the citizens of Uvalde ask the same questions over and over and over again. I find it appalling that they do not get answers. You guys already have the answers. I'm sure of that. Who's doing the investigation? Who's doing all that? Who's investigating? Is it somebody in Texas or in the, who's, he's, what he's, company's doing this? His name is Mr. Prado, and I think he's from Austin. Jesse uh, Prado, he's now retired from Austin get PD. somebody from another state to come into your valley, which is the state of Texas. You guys know these officers. You guys know Chief Rodondo. You know what's going on. 
you know these people. How do I know, how do we know that you're going to not just kind of washy washy about the, the truth on this? But I do believe you already, already know the answer. And you want us to trust you guys. You need to trust us too with the answers. We're not children. We're not children. We need to know what's going on. <coughs> You're always have, I notice that there's always a meeting going on. Meetings, 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 meetings. Why don't you go ahead and have another special meeting where the city council and the school board, we all meet together, even if we have to stay a little longer, and find out what's going on together. It's like the right hand tells the left hand, and there's no in between. There's two different stories all the time. You go into town, you talk to, I go to town, I talk to people. I get so many different stories that I hear. They're sick of it. They're sick. I'm sure if you had that special meeting, we wouldn't mind to stay a little later than, you know, an hour just to get the answers. The families need to start healing. And the process of healing is to get the answers. As long as the answers are not here, they're not going to be able to heal. heal. Um, also, what I want to ask, what about all this, um, I saw last week, I was not in town last week, but I saw on um, Google or something, that some of the citizens of Uvalde went and had a fundraiser with plates, dinner plates or something like that, or like $10 a plate or something. They were using that money to give to the families that need the money. Now, what has happened to that money that the families need now? Couldn't they just take you off? bills and so this is what we need to pay now we have to keep waiting and waiting and waiting i still don't understand about the investigation why you couldn't get somebody from out of town out of the state to come investigate this is oh god it's like cleaning it's like cleaning your house i'm going to get somebody to clean my house so i, uh, I can uh, tell the door y'all are liars Anyway, and you're cowards. He's right. You guys are cowards. All of you. It is a cover-up, and I think we're all sick of that. You value the very strong city, and we're going to be up your asses until we get answers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Emma Trimble? Miss Emma Trimble? Hello. Sorry you couldn't read my writing. <laughs> <clears throat> well, as some of you know, my name is Emma Trimble, and I am a minister here in Uvalde. And I uh, decided to move here in 2018 for no other reason except my concern for Uvalde, for the residents, primarily the children. Um, I don't know if I made that clear the last time I was here uh, speaking before you, but my children have, or the children have been of great concern to me. Um, I wanna let you know that um, I appreciate the fact that you are stepping up and not moving into and running this as a status quo type of meeting. I think the parents most certainly deserve that, most certainly. I appreciate the fact that you are doing this. I feel it is a, a reasonable, reasonable service. It's the least that we can do as a community. Um, I appreciate the fact that I feel the parents have been extremely patient. Um, I don't know that I would be as patient. Um, I, I, I can't imagine what they're going through. I have to tell you that, that I have uh, walked through this process. I have waited very patiently to have an opportunity to speak simply because I didn't want to ignite or cause more trouble. But I do want to speak uh, truth 
And I want to tell you that the way you started this meeting by communicating uh, what's going on, I feel that was very good, very wise. I don't think these parents are asking for anything that's unreasonable. Uh, everything they're asking for is very logical. Um, I would ask for the same, and maybe not quite as um, patiently. In 2018, I guess you all know how Facebook works. Well, I had a memory come up in July this month, 2018, on the very day that they held the first school board meeting at the auditorium. And I was speaking before the Senate Select Committee on Violence and Schools and School Safety in July, four years ago, 2018. I made multiple trips to Austin to communicate the need for us to address these issues in our schools. And, you know, there's all kinds of things that we can do. We can do fences, we can do um, metal detectors, we can do armed uh, teachers. Um, we have the, um, what is it, the uh, Marshall, what is it called, the Guardian program. The dogs, the protective dogs, there's a whole program that we can execute and implement. I know you're not the school board, but I know you have influence upon the school board. And I'm assuming that there are some codes and safety standards that you have to approve. I don't know that that's 100% correct, but I know that you have some voice in that. And I ask you to use every, every single measure that you have available to you to bring some peace to these families. As I said, I don't believe they're asking for anything unreasonable. They don't want to have to not send their kids to school. They want their children to enjoy other children and feel safe at school. I talked to some seniors this year and they said, you know, it doesn't even matter to us that we're not going to get to have the same kind of homecoming and the same kind of graduation because we're gonna be nervous about it. But what does matter to us is that the other children are gonna to have to go through their entire lives up until graduation day being afraid. So if we can give the parents safety standards that are tried and true, nothing's 100%, but I think if the city would bring in a third party evaluation as opposed to allowing the school to be responsible for that, and they get to call all the shots. Can the city do that? Can the city bring in a third party? I have a very um, highly uh, decorated individual who was um, the head of the CIA for one of our presidents. He now has a security business and would be an incredibly unbiased person that would come in with all the purest intentions. Um, I want to say two more things. Thank you for the time. The program that I would like to implement requires cooperation, city collaboration from the city, from the police department, and from the school, and from the citizens. So I ask you to give me the opportunity to present this to you in a collaborative community way I have to say, Uvalde's a tough nut to crack. If you're not a part of the inside core of this city, you're gonna have a really hard time getting in the door. But I pray to God that this situation has brought some of these things to light because things need to change in Uvalde. And we have an opportunity to make a historic difference, but we can't do status quo. We just can't do that anymore. Last but not least, I pray that all of you and the parents as well would pray and ask God for wisdom because none of this is going to get settled with just attorneys and all kinds of quarrels. 
It takes God, the Spirit of God, to move in upon our hearts. And you know, Solomon was in charge of numerous, many, many people. And he prayed and he asked God to confirm his promise that he had made to his father, David. And God wants to move in on us and he wants to do something good here. If just a handful of us will get united in spirit and in truth and ask God for the one thing that Solomon asked for, he asked for wisdom and God said, I'm gonna give it to you. So I pray in the name of Jesus, Father God, I ask that your spirit would move upon us, everyone here, and for these parents, Father, I just speak your peace that passes understanding that only you can give them, God. Move in upon us, God, we invite you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Emma. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mrs. Trumbull. Uh, you mentioned a, uh, a lot of good things that I think need to happen. <clears throat> I know the parents want answers. Nobody wants to give them those answers more than I do, and probably just the city council. It is a process that's going to take place, unfortunately. I am confident that the agency that we hired, Mr. Prado and his company, or his officers, are going to be transparent in their investigation. I say that because I'm going to want answers too. I'm going to ask the questions that need to be asked. Uh, I'm a former police officer, so uh, I got some insight as to uh, actions that need to be taken. And I can assure this the families, this community, that I'm gonna do everything within my power as a member of this council to give you the answers that you want to hear, that you need to hear. Transparency, absolutely. Was there any uh, policies or procedures that were violated or not taken into account? This investigation is gonna bring that out. And if there's any officer who was in violation, of any type of uh, policy or procedure that they needed to act on and did not, and had, that might have caused the, these children to die, these teachers to die, I can assure you, heads are gonna roll. As far as I'm concerned, it's gonna happen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Brent Cross. It looks like Alex left his hand sanitizer. Um, I just have a few questions real quick. Um, Mr. City Manager, you have the capabilities of putting the officers that were there that day on administrative leave? Uh, yes, I would say that, yes. Okay, so why don't we do that until the investigation is over? Because uh, I'm gonna tell you what, and I've seen a couple here right now, that ain't right. I mean, one of them that's here right now, actually, when I asked him if he was the one in the picture, smirked at me and uh, told, him to have, told me to have a nice day. So uh, aside from being pissed off about that, that's, they need to be suspended until the investigation is over, 100%. We don't feel safe with them, the whole, nobody does. And then you're gonna have them right here. We, we understand due process and everything. I mean, we, we get it. We understand. But until the investigation is done, they should be on administrative leave. <clears throat> Will you at least think about it? I mean... We, we went about as far as we could go based on the information we had. As other council members have said, as more oh, information man. becomes available to us, you, you're not... 
I don't know what else to tell you because that's we. Okay. The mayor pro tem said we want to do this correctly. So much about what has gone on has been wrong, and we want to get this right. So uh, we're going to no, try and, and to like do I it said, by I, the book. Uh, I understand, but that's come what on. that's what that's what I can tell you. Okay. Also, um, have uh, y'all been in direct contact with uh, UCI, UCISD on preventative ma uh, measures? I know that y'all aren't them, but have y'all gotten together? Are y'all working together to, to do anything? I think they are on, on start of school yes. procedures and things like that. Yes. I, I can't answer. I, I know uh, at least Chief has been in touch. We've, yes. we've, we've had those discussions, yes, particularly yes. on the start of school. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, I'd like to add something to Emma and you. And I, I, I'm about to leave, but it isn't. I'm not walking out or anything. I've got another meeting to go to. But, right. so I, okay. See you at the next meeting. Um, I think what we have been doing has influenced the school district and the school board and how they handle their meetings and what they're doing. And we're going to push, and I know all of us do it. I do it really hard yes, sir. to make sure they're respecting you guys and make and you guys respect and us. I, I respect you. Exactly. And we're pushing them to do the exact same thing. I think it's made a little difference. And, yes, and I hope it keeps getting better. Yes, sir. And I appreciate guys. it. You know I'm there for you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Daniel Myers. City Council, Assistant City Manager, Mr. Cardenas. On Sunday, there was a meeting at 3835 East Main, the church where we passed it. We had families there that their children are survivors. And what I heard was hard to hear. Children that are sleeping with their parents. Children that are afraid to go back to school. Children that are now wet in the bed. Two months later, and these kids are hurting. I mean hurting. Mr. Bonner, would you stand for a second? Thank you. These children are hurting. We, we cannot let things just keep going the way they are. And I want to thank you because you, you guys are talking back, talking to the people. You're not sitting there like zombies like yesterday at the city council, the school, uh, school, uh, school board meeting. <laughs> thank you for talking to us. And I, I just want to go back to, to the last meeting that we had on the 12th. I believe you were in charge of the, the plaza where you said that the families were asked to remove their belongings and it wasn't so, they were told. Did you get that cleared up? Did you get that straightened up? Did we get that straightened up? I mean, yes, the people that you thought that they were asking the people, but they weren't asking, they were telling the people. What, what came about that? We looked into it and we, we backed off on our position on, on the plaza. And as you can see, uh, memorials have returned and they'll be there indefinitely. Because according to what you were telling us, you were telling us that uh, the people were being asked and it wasn't so. Well, I'm going to chalk that up to uh, miscommunication between my staff and, and the families. And that's, Th that's what we I, want. I took responsibility we for that last time. We want that was not our intent. That was not what we were trying to achieve. We, as I stated before, we thought we had an understanding, and we were proceeding on that. All right. I just want I, you to know, City Council, the families, I, I can't even speak for the ones that are here that were affected directly, but the ones, the kids that were, they were survived, I, I personally saw a little boy we met at, at, there at, Law, at Rob, and he was completely the opposite for the massacre took place. Just being there, just talking to us, he broke down and cried. 
We hugged him and prayed with him and cried with him. So know that there's a lot of pain still out there. A lot of pain. Two months later, and these kids relive this over and over and over again. This special meeting, this special uh, that are investigating the Uvalde PD, it would be nice if you would have one of those peons be a part of that. Just to know what's going on. Just, just to, what are you guys doing? I mean, why are you doing that? Why aren't you asking this and why aren't you asking that? Because we have a lot of questions. We have a lot of questions. So again, thank you for dialoguing with us. We're asking for transparency. That's all we're asking for. Talk to us. Talk to us. And before I step down, on Saturday there was a, what we call the Parque Mexicano. There was a benefit being held over there for families that were affected. We're out there selling plates for food for other families. Why do they have to resort to that? What, where's all the funds for these families that are affected, literally, are out there? Uh, uh, the, the teacher, Mr. Reyes, was out there also. Why are they having to do that, city council? Why? Is that an initiative they took up on their own, or where's their, where's their help? Where's their help? I'm asking you, please. And, and if this is for the families. They need help. They need help. So I ask you, I ask you to, to help the families. And to all the families that are here, I would encourage you to talk to Mr. Bonner. He has great insight on, on helping you on your legal rights. Thank you, City Council. Real, Mr. Meyer, real quick. If you know of any family that needs help, I mean, the uh, I know the fire department helps. I know there's a lot of organizations, the churches are helping. So please spread the word and tell them to reach out to those people, okay? So that way they can get the help they need. Now, the, the fund that's in the bank, it's, it's, it's tied up. It, it's there's a there's a Hold on, committee. There's we a have committee nothing to do with that fund in the bank. That's that's that's. Let me. Let, okay, ma'am. That fund, the big fund that everybody hears about, has not, none of the funds have anything to do with the city of Valley. Those are done. Privately, the bank is the I guess has that fund, and they uh, the state committee? got together, and they all the, everybody created a committee. We have nothing to do with that. However, the city is if, if families have problems paying the bills or water bills and we things like that, know. we are helping with that. If y'all need help, we are here to help, and we will do that. Number two, the fire department, Uvalde Volunteer Fire Department, PayPal Charitable Fund. If you guys want to get some money in people's hands really quick donate to that we will make sure the families get money originally we started for the families who uh, for the injured for some of those that were still in the hospitals and we've expanded if we can get more money in that account the fire department's going to help all the families mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so if anybody the press if you guys put that out there you've got a volunteer fire department there's a there's a paypal charitable fund donate to that and that money if we got enough money next week that's going to go in their in their pockets mm -hmm. i guarantee okay. you yeah. Okay. I was just curious because it's, it's yeah. hard to understand these funds that came in and, and here are families that they were there's, literally. There's dozens of funds and we have no idea who they are. Yeah. Like that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Berlinda uh, uh, Arriola. First and foremost, I wanted to tell y'all, y'all are doing a lot better than what y'all did in the first meeting. Mr. Lovino, I give you props. Yeah. You have changed your attitude. Can't speak for him because he's not here. You, I feel like, I call BS. I feel like you have enough to put them on administrative leave. You just choose not to. Again, hiding. 
which that's just my opinion. I don't have much to say, and I really, I'm, I'm not gonna sit up here and, and go on because I need to get to another meeting as well, but I just wanted to let y'all know that I appreciate what y'all are trying to do. I see a difference in y'all, but again, like I told the city, the school district yesterday, don't mistake our kindness for weakness because we're not done. Thank you. Thank you. That's right, we're not done until we get everything done. All our answers will be, will be, be answered. Because we have as many questions as the family has on this incident. So, Sorry. yes, we are going to I forgot work. to address, as far as the miscommunication, I know there was miscommunication on the, on, on the cross. Yes. Because we were told that, there are, that you guys were supposed to have a meeting with the parents to figure out where, that, where they wanted to put that cross. That meeting never happened yeah. because y'all denied it. So no. just for as far no, as mis miscommunication. Okay. Well, I think I was about the only one who's contacted on that cross from the Kretzingers, I think, who brought that in. I was contacted on a Thursday, and I think you can see Facebook posts about it if you go back and look. It was a Thursday I was contacted. They said, we're coming Saturday to put this thing up. And I was like, I, the cities cannot help you that quick. And I wasn't the one who said, do you want to put it in storage? That was somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but I contacted one of y'all ahead of time. We found out way before when it was already being built. I contacted one of y'all. And I am not going to throw you under the bus, but you know who you are. And you specifically said, we're coming Saturday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
the best opportunity to stop the shooter. But can you at a minimum, at a minimum, to provide some sense of comfort to the families primarily, uh, put them at, on desk duty, take them off the street so that those are not the officers that they and we have to depend on should we need an officer to respond to a crisis in our life. Because there is no confidence from the families and many in this community that those officers are going to serve us well. And so can you at least, at a minimum, put them on desk duty? And if that is going to cause an issue in regards to coverage for the city, ask the governor or whomever is able to approve something to provide DPS officers to step in to support your other officers and Chief Rodriguez to continue to uh, provide services and protect the city. I don't think that's a lot to ask. You say you can't do administrative leave at a minimum, and I think you could certainly do this, is to put them on desk duty. And from my observations and readings of the material that's been put out, Obviously, Mariano Vargas is already on administrative leave, so that's taken care of. But I believe then also, and I'm gonna, I don't know their ranks, so Javier Martinez, Greg Villa, Eduardo Canales, Daniel Coronado, and Justin Mendoza. Those are the officers uh, that, to my knowledge, from the conversations with the families and supporters are the ones that are really needing to be off the street. So am I to understand from the investigation done by Mr. Prado, he is going to make recommendations as to how to deal with discipline and dismissal, or is that going to be internal between Chief Rodriguez and Mr. DiPiazza? Recommendations to the council, I don't know. Are they gonna have the authority to make that decision without you? Mr. Prado will make the recommendations and then we will consider, of course, through the city manager, the police, the chief of police, uh, disciplinary actions to what he, what we think is right for that uh, officer. For, and, and I, for one, do believe that there needs to be levels of accountability based on yes. participation or lack of participation, where they were on site, that type of thing. But that's just my opinion. The one thing that really, and it, you know, kind of, just all falls within the same conversation that just really bothers me is that my understanding from the investigative report, Mariano Pargas was given uh, order by Chief Rodriguez, though he was not in the state, to set up a command post that day, mm -hmm. and that didn't happen. A command post would have helped the situation. It was a direct order and it wasn't followed. And that is really very disturbing to think that that could have prevented some things along with having an incident commander, which obviously Mr. Arredondo continues to tell us it wasn't him. I guess the, other, the only other thing I will say and the last thing I will say is that I too appreciate that the council is having a conversation with us, is attempting to the best of your ability given your constraints and your attorney's advice, attempting to try to help us understand, attempting to take action as you're able, and that is very much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Rosenberg Risa. Councilman, yeah, one of the things that I wanted to, to stress was, like I had asked over there at the school board, was that myself. I go pick up my grandson at two o'clock, four o'clock, and all of that. And I always see police underneath the tree. 
for hours and hours, not, not walking to schools or anything. And that's when I mentioned to the school board and Mr. Harrell that what you need to do is get out of your office and walk the schools. All of all the whole school boards should be walking the schools. Hey, it doesn't take much to go out there. Don't even tell them you're going to the school and just the doors and everything. Hey, so I'm asking this to the city council, to everybody there. You know, as don't wait for something to happen or for it to go on the agenda 10 days from now or whatever, like the school board is 30 days. You know, I'm gonna ask you to go ahead because drive around, whatever. If you see anything, I mean, it's just common sense because myself, sometimes I'm, I drive to the Walmart, I see a police car parked in this area. I go back, hour later, that car is still there. Not doing anything. I don't know if he's sleeping, I don't know if he's patrolling that area or what, but there's no need for a police car to sit in one location for an hour. There's no way. So what I'm asking you all to do is take time, a little bit of your time in the afternoons or in the mornings or whatever, just drive around town. If you see anything, I mean, say something, say something to the police, to the mayor, anybody, <coughs> you know, because that's gonna help the citizens, it's gonna help us, I mean, the community, everything. You know, don't wait for something to happen. Just like the school board, they, not a single person of the school board had gone to the schools. Mm -hmm. Not a single person, because they couldn't even answer my question. So, but I want to make sure that, that does not happen here with the city. I know you all help more than the school board. And for that, thank you very much. But at the same time, you got to help the citizens too. You're helping the students, everybody. If you need to, I don't know, it might be a little difficult to go to the school once everything apparently is going to be secure but it doesn't hurt to try. That's all I ask. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Risa. Uh, Mr. Risa, uh, I'd just like to respond to some of your requests. Uh, I think this investigation that's gonna be done by Mr. Prado, he is gonna make some recommendations, you know, to the chief of police and the department. If there's things that uh, need to be addressed or changed, that's gonna be part of his investigation also, just so you know that, the, the procedures. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Risa, you wanna say something? Yes, sir. Uh, sat back a little bit and, and, you know, not to give any attention to Alex or whatever, but I don't, you know, I don't appreciate Alex, whatever his name is, I wanna give me more credit, coming into our house, coming into our city, and disrespecting the families like that. It brought the feelings back up, can't even focus on what we want to say. Totally unacceptable. When you see the county line, Alex, and it says you Valley County, turn that truck around, whatever you drive, and send it back to your little town, your little Dallas where you come from. Do not play on the feelings of these people. And for one other thing is, is I ask people not to share the video. He came here, he does his little ratings or sets up a little camera or something. He goes out there, what does he do? Take the camera out and he's probably in his car uploading this stuff. You know, pay no attention to someone like that, you know. That's right. And you gotta give him free speech, you gotta give him three minutes yeah. and stuff like that. But yes, I apologize sir. to the families for yes. totally disrespect. I yes. wanna apologize for being verbal towards him, but I'll take I'll take a yelling from any family member in here all day long. You guys could sit here and yell at us and scream at us all day long. I'll take that. I won't take that from someone grandstanding. Period. Yes, I appreciate so. that. Thank you, Mr. Steve. And I know I'm going to be all over the internet, but people can send me a dozen emails calling me all kinds of names after that, so all send right. them on. Just want to say thank you. Uh, let's move off to item number five, consent agenda. 
make a, mo a motion and go ahead and read them. Mm -hmm. 5A, consider the minutes of July 12th, 20, 2022, regular city council meeting. Consi uh, 5B, consider the payment of bills over 5,000 from July 8th, 2022 <coughs> through July 22, 2022. Sir, may I make a motion that we uh, approve the consent agenda as presented 5A and 5B? Second. Second. There was a motion by Mr. Luano, second by Mr. Bulky. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Uh, item 6, new business, 6A. Consider the request from Victoria, I hope I say it right, during, during. With, the, with Victoria Communications to allow patrons who have purchased alcohol beverages at Broadway 830 to carry them on the sidewalk during the Four Square Friday event that takes place in downtown Uvalde. Victoria? You sure you Council wanna, members. You sure you uh, so technically, I'm asking permission on behalf of you because I'm asking permission on behalf of the entire Main Street and downtown jurisdiction to continue the Four Square Friday initiative and let the downtown businesses take advantage of that on, at, their, at their leisure. So um, technically, the ordinance, um, it being stated in there, is the second Friday of every month um, to allow patrons to walk downtown freely with open containers of alcohol isn't technically on the books. When we're looking into um, taking a bigger uh, initiative and being involved in a bigger event for Four Square Friday at our Broadway 830 location and looking into TABC and things of that and what we were and were not allowed to encourage patrons to do. Um, I was told that it wasn't technically on the books still. So um, I'm asking actually for every Four Square Friday, second Friday of every month, um, 6.30 to, or 6 to 11 p.m. just open for our downtown area. I got, if I can just jump in, what she means is in the state of Texas, unless we specifically ban people from having alcohol on the street, then you can have alcohol on the street everywhere except in our parks, that, you, that's banned. So you guys have had that before you before, but so we have no ordinance that prevents people from drinking whilst they meander. Um, and so what Ms. During's point is just that she's letting you guys know, we don't have that, so you don't actually have to vote on anything here, but so you are aware um, Foursquare does serve alcohol and people take it as they kind of go back and forth between But them. we did approve it on the yeah. park in the square already. Uh, so specifically we, right, so technically the square is a park. Yeah, and, and we approved that. And we've, we've approved that and kind of just all agreed like as Foursquare, they're meandering through, we haven't really done anything enforcement wise. We have specifically approved it for events that we've had in other city parks. So when we had like queso and beer. Yeah. Court yeah. Case, queso Sorry, queso, yes. queso, yes. Uh, we specifically approved it for On that event basis, yeah. in that park. But the rest of the town, there's no, I mean, the state of Texas just does not have any bans on alcohol. So when people say open container, they mean in a vehicle. You can't have an open container, not on the street. So, so if, if, is it proper for us to, to say we want an ordinance to say you can drink on the street or just leave it as it is? Uh, I, there's, no, there's no ordinance necessary. Um, okay. to, because there is, so in essence, having no ordinance means that you can drink, you can have an open container on the street as a pedestrian. Yeah. Thank you for that clarification, <laughs> Mrs. Beckerson. <laughs> so maybe, I mean, maybe what we should do is have a motion to, to kind of do a blanket for the square? Yes. Just for the square? Because that covers the square front. So would this be an ordinance or this is just a just i don't think it really needs to be an ordinance because it's more of a it's just like a yeah. non-enforcement issue yeah. like the single in my yeah the park ordinance as written just says if someone stores alcohol in the park they must be approved, approved. okay so this is a blanket permission for right okay i make a motion we create whatever paperwork is required to uh, allow blanket approvals during Four Square Friday to, to serve or allow to carry alcohol and serve, so I got to throw that in, in our square downtown. Four Square Friday. And leave the rest of them out. And should we say Four Square Friday or should we say four square downtown Friday. celebrations? Four square Friday. Uh, let's say Four Square Friday. Friday. And then we can expand upon it. Yes. Four Square Friday. Okay. I've got a question for Mr. Jeremy. Yes, sir. 
<clears throat> does your ABC license, I think your like Broadway, does it have any restrictions or, or prohibitions about alcohol leaving the premises? Do you know? No, you cannot take, from what I understand, I actually called TABC and spoke with an officer, and she said that um, people cannot bring alcohol onto our premises as per TABC law, but taking it out, it would be up to the onus of the person what they were and weren't doing with it. You They're mean, up to their own Plus personal. they can take it to go, too, right? Now, yeah. still, so it's still yes, sir. But I'm asking just on behalf of, you know, Julian's, you know, what they want to give. It's for everybody. Yes. Yeah, I want to make sure there's not 830 yes. in my motion. It's everybody. I had a motion on the table. Oh, there's a, I second that motion. So the motion was made by Steve King. I second it. Can, All you, those repeat, can you repeat your motion? My motion was going to be a blanket approval for, for the square, not necessarily for any business, but for four square Fridays, that uh, alcohol can be carried in the square and can be served there if we have a vendor doing that during one of these operations. Okay. Kind of making it generic. Yes. So we have motion by Councilman King, second by myself. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you, and thank you for your service thank you, and dedication thank you for everything to you do. our community. Uh, item 6B, consider request from UCI. Nope, that's tabled. Okay, that was tabled. 6B is tabled. Item 6C, consider resolution asking Governor Greg Abbott to call a special session of the legislature to consider raising the minimum age of purchase semi-automatic assault rifles from 18 to 21. Uh, I'm going to make a motion that we approve 6C. Second. Second by Councilman Balkin. All those in favor? Discussion. Aye. Discussion? I was just going to make sure we didn't need to read the resolution. So yeah, if you, if you want to. We, I got a question. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Bianca, what, what is, uh, how does this resolution work? It's a statement of council's opinion and, and a request to the governor. I mean, we'll send it to the governor's office. But it makes it's, it it's uh, works, I think it's I think other entities in the in the area are passing this resolution. And sure. It's an expression of your your uh, request, your your intent. And how do we know that the governor's going to actually receive it? You know, he's going to actually receive it. I mean, we'll send it to his office. I don't know. You know what well, we don't, we don't, we don't know whether he'll even see it, right? What happens after <laughs> after we get to the governor's I office? I don't. I don't know. You can try that. I would. <laughs> Well, I'm not even going to editorialize on it, but I, you know. and I understand. Uh, I think the county commissioners approved something similar, and yes, I think last night the school, the school board approved something similar. But uh, it's probably not much more than a symbolic gesture. Exactly, it's just a it's just a, a motion, uh, and uh, well, it just it, it just it, puts it, a little bit more pressure yeah, on them. What well, we want the citizens of Texas, the citizens of Uvalde, uh, hey, you know what? We yeah, vote no, for you. Take it into consideration. No, to our expression to the to the governor, hey, look at it, because we are we are voters, so oh. okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. <clears throat> Item six D. Consider go ahead. Can I make a comment on this? Uh, on the resolution? On the resolution. Uh, I, I think Mr. Di Piazza said it very plainly, this is only a symbolic type thing. I really don't think it's worth the paper it's written on. Because <clears throat> uh, we have a, a governor in office right now <clears throat> that, if, if you all recall, the, the massacre, the shooting that happened in Valley was on May 24th, a Tuesday. On that following Friday, two, three days later, he was on the big screen addressing the NRA in Houston, Texas. Uh, I don't, you know, we're asking him to, to uh, call a, uh, a special session. This is what this is. And I doubt very seriously it's gonna happen. I don't, I hope it does. I hope, it, I hope he calls a session. But really and truly, I don't think it's gonna happen. We have an election coming up in November. He's on the ballot. And if it's gonna happen, it's probably gonna be after the election. 
I, uh, I went back and I looked at a video, the video actually where he spoke in front of the NRA through a big screen, and you can go and Google it and find it yourself. But he talked about all the laws that we have about guns. That's what he talked about, and we know there's laws out there. Uh, he also made it a point to say that uh, carrying a gun on campus is a felony. You know, use alert, right? We know that. He made no mention of whether there needs to be any changes in our gun laws. And that's what we want. That's what this resolution is asking for. And I'm sorry, but uh, I don't believe it's going to happen. That's just my opinion. Because the NRA has uh, given more than $2.1 million to our senators and House of Representatives here in Texas. And uh, whether you believe it or not, but the NRA has your governor, Abbott, in their, in their back pocket. He's not, he's not gonna, you know, he's not gonna muddy the waters because he's campaigning, his campaign is being funded largely by the NRA. So is this gonna happen? Is this uh, uh, special session gonna happen? I think not. And why do we have to ask for a re uh, special session? Why doesn't he take the initiative after May 24th to say we need to sit down and talk about this because we can't let this happen anymore? He hasn't done it. We have to make a resolution. We have to ask him. The citizens have to ask him to have a special session. Is that the type of person you want leading this this state of Texas? Okay. I don't. I don't know that he even cares about Uvalde. It's 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 a shame that he that he uh, portrays himself as the governor and the leader of this Texas, and uh, we have to ask him to hold a special session. I hope it happens. I really do hope it happens. But even if it does, I don't think it's going to pass. That's all I got to say. Thank you, Mr. Bell. Uh, item 16, consider the approval of ordinance amending chapter 13.16.025 of the Code of Ordinance bulk purchases of water. Okay, so we're in a drought and